Ooh. Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> Construction impacts our daily lives in unique ways. It shapes the cities we live in, the homes we dwell in, builds the infrastructure that drives our economies. Uh... Yet this global $17 trillion industry, also one of the world's most polluting, is one of the world's most wasteful and inefficient. And we believe this is because whilst we design digitally, we still construct manually. Construction is inundated with outdated tools and processes. They just don't have the technology to keep track and measure what they're trying to build. They use chalk, bits of string to construct, and post-it notes to keep track of progress on multi-million euro projects. For example, on a site in Oslo last year, a structural beam was brought to the attention of site management. This was three centimeters deviated from where it was supposed to be built and entirely missed by existing quality control, including the site surveyor. If this had been left undiscovered, it would have cost thousands of euros, seven days in delays, and the valuable time of eight site managers. And that's just one beam. And the crazy bit is, this is considered normal in construction. And this is the problem Scaled Robotics is trying to address. With robotics and artificial intelligence, we're building tools that can track and accurately measure construction progress so that your projects can stay on budget and on schedule. It's simple. You can't manage what you can't measure. And that beam in Oslo that I told you about automatically flagged up by software developed by Scaled Robotics under 24 hours, brought to the attention of site management, and fixed with no extra cost. So how do we do all this? Our robots drive around site, building detailed 3D maps of the environment. This captures the current state of the construction project. We then automatically upload this data to our servers for analysis. Switch to demo, please. Then we perform non-rigid registration, non-linear optimization, machine learning on the raw data to filter out all the noise and provide precise statistical analysis regarding the quality of build on every element. And this complex information is then delivered back to the client on an easy-to-use web-based interface. What you see in front of you is simple color-coded information. Gray means we don't have enough data to make an assessment. Red means it's missing. Green means it's been built correctly. And orange, as you might have guessed, means it's built incorrectly. And as you can see, we are standing in a sea of orange, which means everything is wrong. <laughs> now, knowing everything is wrong is not particularly useful information as a site manager. What you care most as a site manager is what's putting my project most at risk. And we make this information searchable. Let's say you've had issues with quality of steelwork. You can say, show me all my beams and columns, filter them by date of build, Not only that, filter them by quality of build. Show me everything that's deviated above x millimeters. Now what you get is an automatically ranked list by deviation, so you can focus your attention on what is putting your project most at risk, rather than having to sift through hundreds of thousands of data points. In fact, you can even go further and diagnose one of these issues. You can visualize point-wise deviations with a heat map. And now you've gone from whole-scale site-wide information to extremely granular point-wise information. But if you're like me, you want to see this with your own eyes. So we've automatically tagged every element on site in every image that it appears, so you get multiple vantage points to see what's going on. But like you can see, all beams look the same. You can go ahead and highlight this element. And now you know exactly what's going on with your site. And the really cool bit is this complex analysis that we've just shown you is available to all the stakeholders at their fingertips even before setting foot on site. Switch back to presentation, please. So we are taking this to market on a B2B SaaS model. We integrate seamlessly with existing workflows and existing laser scanners. We also integrate with all widely used industry standard file formats. Our typical client 
is a large general contractor with multi-billion euro revenue. We onboard them on a single project and then grow within the organization. We are running active pilot projects in Europe, and I've done tests in both Middle East and in Asia. And we also want to thank our partners at Autodesk, who have the largest market share in AC software. They have championed our product to their customer base. Every product needs a great team. We are an eclectic mix of academic and industry experts, where more than half of our team has PhDs. Our CEO, Stuart, is a trained architect with more than a decade of experience in the industry, construction industry. And I have a PhD in robotics and artificial intelligence. And I spent my past decade at some of the world's most renowned labs in both industry and academia. So to all the large general contractors out there, mm. are you tired of 1% and 2% margins? Then shoot us an email. We are confident our product will help you stay on budget and on schedule on your next project. Thanks. What's uh, coming out here? Yeah. Oh, cool. Thank you for the pitch. Um, um, so construction is a very uh, notoriously large and non-digitized industry. And I, I guess the nature of many projects is that they're very custom and, and quite different. Um, so how are you thinking about introducing automation, both in terms of data acquisition and interpretation, rather than doing um, a custom service every time you have to analyze a new project? I mean, every project is unique in its own way, but there's so many things that are not unique. We still use concrete. We still use steel predominantly. Most countries have kind of a set way to construct most buildings. So yes, every project is put together differently, but you're still pretty much using the same materials uh, on every single project. So what we learn from one project does directly impact then the, the information that we can deliver on the next one. So there is quite a lot of uniform details there. We take it to the basics. At the end of the day, you have a 3D model. You're trying to manufacture it on site. It is on site manufacturing. It's like any other manufacturing industry. And what we're doing is we're taking lessons learned in other manufacturing industries, where they've gone from a lot of waste to zero waste, like cell phone manufacturing. And that's because of process control and lean manufacturing. We're trying to bring the same thing to construction. And how does the relationship work exactly with the customer? You said that um, you're charging them per project. Um, do you lease them the, the hardware? How long does it take a machine to, to go through a site? Do you need a human that you provide to then maintain the machine or bring the machine or take the machine? How does that dynamic work? So we do it on a monthly, uh, a monthly fee. So depending on the size of the project, we can put one or multiple robots. So it's a scalable solution, hence the name Scale Robotics. <laughs> so if you're, if you're doing something maybe 100,000 square meters, maybe you're going to require two or three of these robots, and you'll strategically deploy them around the project. We then charge for a monthly fee on the amount of data that you're producing, the amount of robots that you have, um, and what kind of analysis that you want to get out of that. And then in terms of the people, we reduce the amount of human interaction with the robot. But there is a certain relationship that the general contractors have to be able to direct where they actually want to capture that information on a particular day. So there's no point doing it blind and letting the robot drive around right. and capture something that's not in the schedule. So it, it's kind of a hybrid relationship that they have between the two. OK, gotcha. Um, I'm, I'm having a little bit of a problem here in the sense that what's the real advantage of having a robotic solution versus, say, allowing um, site managers, architects to use commodity cameras to capture the data, upload it to your platform. You don't have to get into hardware. You don't have to worry about you know, driving a machine around or whatever. The scale is the fact you have a platform which they can use, uh, and then you can do you know, visual, uh, you know, interpret the, the data, the visual data yourself, clearly, which clearly you are so, doing already. So why do you need the hardware? So there are two parts to that answer. The first thing is our software platform is agnostic to the data capture device. We can take any traditional laser scanner, and that data can be uploaded to our software platform, and we can still process it. In fact, a couple of the pilots we're running, they're using their own laser scanners. This is where we seamlessly integrate into their workflow. They don't have to change anything about the way we work to start using this. As for raw cameras, if you just do raw cameras, you are not going to get the same precision that we get. You do need a laser device to be able to capture the data with the kind of precision and accuracy that we can provide. And you need to, you need to produce your own uh, laser device and cameras to, in order to get, get the accurate data. No, we can actually still work. 
you can use our platform too. Ours is a faster reality capture platform, but you can also use your own laser scanner. We are providing right. you the option of okay. using our platform, but you can use your own laser scanner too. I see. Okay, great. Totally understand that the construction industry has a ton of waste, and a lot of that waste comes from error. And think catching things early seems like a very significant value proposition. How do you quantify that for your customers? And do you have case studies or examples where you've been able to pinpoint a specific waste reduction? So we're developing those case studies now. As you can imagine, it takes a little bit of time to kind of see through a project that maybe lasts 18 months to see every single detail. But I'll give you a, a clear case example. Um, the first day we deployed on a construction site, I will not name the company or the location. The first day we deployed, the first time we took data, we found approximately 10 to 20,000 euros worth of mistakes or things that would have caused issue in, uh, later on down the line. They got fixed within that week at no extra cost, but the longer that goes on, the more complex the solution to solve it is. So there was a structural wall which was 10 centimeters from where it should have been. If it was caught on the day, they can just knock it down and move it without any problems because there's nothing on top, so there's no structural issues. One month down the line, that schedule delay is now going to impact all the subcontractors that rely on that space to be able to work. So the longer it takes, the more it's going to cost. Yeah, and just a follow on. So, I mean, in some respects, you show people, you, sh you reveal where, pro where, where <laughs> poor work has been done or where people haven't followed process. And so people might dislike this or they might put their an angst against this uh, beautiful piece of equipment. How do you engender love and in <laughs> instead of uh, animosity? So the person that's probably going to hate this most is the general contractor or the subcontractor who's actually doing the work. But we've had these discussions. So imagine um, you've done a week's worth of really hard work. You think everything is perfect. No one comes to work wanting to do a bad job. Mistakes happen. We're, we're only human. Would you rather know that that mistake happened while you're still on site and you haven't gone to another job? Or do you want to know three months down the line when you've gone to another job, you've got other responsibilities, you just want to go home to your family. So once you put it in, in that respect, then they understand the value of it and they see that in the end it's going to save them time and money and energy. Especially, for instance, one of the sites we showed you, Oslo. When the data was being captured, there was minus 20 degrees. <laughs> so nobody wants to go back in that environment to do something. And the fact that we can deliver that solution to them right away so that they can fix it, there's a huge amount of value. Another thing is the entire operation of the device, if they're using our robot, for example. It's poker yoke. You know, you don't need to be a computer scientist to be able to operate this thing. It's a joystick, a remote, you know, a video game controller. And they generally, the best thing we've seen is they're not in awe of the device. They see it as a tool, like a screwdriver or a wrench on site. This is another tool that helps them do their job better. Thanks. In the business model where you make robots and then you have a SaaS fee, there's some payback associated with you know, getting recurring revenue and an upfront hardware investment. Like what, what kind of math are you optimizing around in terms of making the bit, this business model work? So one of the things we're doing is we're optimizing around geography. So we're focusing on a couple of locations within Europe and the US at the moment to make sure that we can focus all our resources on a couple of projects that are really delivering the most value for the solutions we have today. But then we're also targeting companies that already have existing reality capture teams. So they're already generating that raw data that they just have no way of really making use of. So we're adding value on top of an investment that they've already made. Um, and we're kind of structuring it around a balance between those two things. And I would also kind of mention that considering the value that we're delivering back to the customers, the cost of the robot is, is quite low in relationship to that. Maybe off stage we can tell you how much it costs. It's nothing. Awesome. Okay. Last questions? All right, one more <laughs> round of applause for Scaled Robotics. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for Thank you. Bye.